leave you. You don't have a friend until your friends got your back in the midst of trouble. If somebody trying to jump you, they're going to have to deal with them. I mean, otherwise, if they're scared, telling you that they got your back and they so far behind you that you can't even find them. <laughs> then you're going to be in real trouble. So God said, tell all of the scared folks to go back. But remember, see, we find keys here from the scripture of how Gideon succeeded against the odd, how God says, I'm going to use just 300 people to defeat an army of 135,000. Those are some really challenging odds to overcome, but Gideon overcame them. And I want you to see some of the principles here from the word of God that he used. First, he rose up early. You need a head start instead of just merely starting over. Get a head start. Get a head start. You got to begin to gather things before you need them. Because if you don't get it before you need it, uh, it'll be scared out of you when the thing comes. And so get up early. And then notice that it, they encamp beside a well, the well of Harad. You've got to always encamp yourself by something that gives you life. You've got to be encamped by something that refreshes you, that restores you, that renews you. See, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And then whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And it's, it's, it's tree, it, it, it's going to bring forth its fruit in its season, but it's going to do so because it's planted by some water. You need people that will refresh you with the water of the word. They've got water in them and they can give you a word that can refresh you and encourage you and strengthen you. You need people who've got water in them to surround you. Water in them. They need water in them. And, and, and then notice after he told the scared folks to go and 22,000 people left, that left them with 10,000 folks. And God says, you still got too many. I don't need 10,000 to do what I'm going to do. I don't even need 10,000. I can do what I'm going to do through 300 and I need to eliminate them and this is how I get them away. See, you don't need just crowds around you. The strength is not in crowds, there's strength in unity. If you got 300 unified folks, you can do more than 10,000 folks that are just a crowd with their own agendas. The strength is not in numbers, strength is in unity. Strength is in unity. That was proven in South Africa because 2% of the people were ruling 98%. The 2% that were ruling, they didn't have numbers, but they had strength. They had unity. They were together, united in their purpose. You don't need great numbers to rule. You need great unity. The strength was in unity. And so God says, I want to get rid of the folks that's not even with you that you think are with you. Pressure exposes people. And it's not even until you have to disagree with people that you really find out who's with you and who's not. Are you listening? You don't know where people stand with you until you have to tell them no about something. Oh, my God. There are some people that you don't even know who they are until you cross them. And then you will see a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of a demon come out of the woodwork. You don't know people. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. You're not going to do what? You don't really know who people are until you disagree with them. That's where their real character will come out and show. Are you listening? Anybody learning anything? And, and let me tell you how God said, listen, he said, you, you need to get away from the crowd because, you know, God's, nothing God really ever did came by a crowd anyway. What God will do in your life, God will do by a remnant seed. A remnant seed. A remnant seed. All God needs is something that may be small but dedicated. Small but committed. Small but determined. Small but unified. That, that, that's all. He doesn't need big numbers. You don't need a whole lot of money to do what God really wants you to do. God will never judge you based on what you didn't have. He'll always judge you based on how you used what you had. Moses, what is that that is in thine hand? So he's not even going to deal with the issues of the stuff that you didn't have. And so he got rid of the crowd. 
So he gave him a test. He said, all right, you done told the scared folks to go home. 22,000 left. Now you got 10,000. Now I need to trim that down. And so he said, I, you got to have discernment for this. He said, I want to I sh show you, bring you down to the water. There's something that you never know until you come down to the water. Water has a way of exposing people. Uh, you keep on attracting thugs and dogs in your life. See, we are three-fourths water and water seeks its own level. So... If you don't like what you're in, a, attracting, you got to begin to fortify yourself. You need to, you know, put some vitamins in your water, some minerals in your water. You begin to draw something on a different level. And so, here's what happened. God brought him down to the water. He said, I'll, I'll test them for you in the water, down by the water. I will test them for you. Now, I want you to understand what God did by the test. I want you to understand this very carefully. A lot of people can... can uh, Read that inscription and just brush over it. You find powerful gems. I, I love to exegete just little things out of the scripture. I'm not, I don't read into the scripture. I mind revelation out of them. And, and, and here it is. He said, bring them down to the water and I'll test them for you. And he brought them down and he just said, tell them to drink. Don't tell them how to drink. Tell them to drink. And oftentimes just the how. Jesus is interested in the how. He went into the temple one day and sat by the treasury to see how the people would cast their money. Not to see how much they were putting in, but to see how they put it in. And he happened to notice a widow woman that didn't have but two mites. It wasn't in how much she had or how little she had. Are you listening? But it was in how she actually gave it. And, and, and he said this woman out of her penury. Penury is destitution for the basic necessities of life. Out of her need, she has given. And he says, I tell you this, this woman has given more than all of them because she gave 100%. She was the only one that gave 100% and she did it gladly, sowing with expectancy in her heart. And so there are times that he will, he'll bring you down. And, and, and here's what happened. 9,700 of the men bent over to the water and lapped it up like a dog. I want you to hear this very carefully. 9,700 bent down and lapped it up like a dog. When you've got your face to the ground, you have no vigilance. You can't look around. You don't see what's coming at you. You're just... There's some people that, that receive from the hand of the Lord and never look up to say thank you. Never look up to see the hand that's even feeding them. Never looks up to see who is really blessing them. They're just, all of they're in, interested in are the blessing. Ooh, what you drive? Ooh, what kind of house you living in? Ooh, where you taking me out to eat? And all of these things are just, just lapping up water. This, now, now, now I want you to understand, let's, let's take a hold of this, the water is the word. And when you're just calling yourself just lapping, lapping up water, just getting it in you, you're just getting a quick fix. Now listen, the ones that he said that, that I want to use as the vigilant soldiers, I want to get the ones who reach down with their hand and get it and bring it to the mouth. Here's a revelation. I want to get those and use those who grab a hold of the word. Oh. I, I want to use people who grab a hold of it. So you can get stuff in you that you never grabbed a hold of. And, and there's something about when you grab a hold of it, you are vigilant in the whole process. Because I can look around and still be on my command and on my post. And while I'm getting it, I, I, I'm watching what the devil is trying to do to my children. And while, while I'm getting mine, I, I'm, I'm seeing stuff that he's trying to work with the husband that's in my life, with the wife. And, and see, I'm not stupid. I, I'm not just getting something for me. But while I'm getting it, I got a discernment. I'm getting a hold of this thing. And, and he said, I don't even want to use people that can't get a hold of the word. And it keeps on slipping through them. Now they're just getting something in them that they've never grabbed a hold of. You got to be able to grab a hold of this thing and get it to your mouth and ingest it. And I'm telling you, I pray, I, 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 lift your hand up if you get in there today and say, I'm getting a hold of this. I'm getting a hold of it. Say, I see it. I see it. I, I got a hold of it. 
If you ever get a hold of it, nobody will be able to take away your understanding. The devil, when you talk.